Hello, dear friends. This is Yule Humphreys. I'm glad to be with you today and share again a word with you from the Bible. And uh, I want you to notice that today I'm sharing a word that's very important, and it's concerning the Lord Jesus Christ, our beloved Savior. And the title of the short message is Behold the Man. We read in the book of John, the 19th chapter, where Jesus is standing before Pilate, and and then he was he was scourged, he was beaten, and uh, tied at the post, and was beaten until he was bloody. And then the Bible says that uh, Pilate went forth then again to the people and said, "Behold, I bring him before you. I find no fault in him." He figured in his heart that if if he had brought him out and showed the people what he had done to him and beaten him and humiliated him, and that that would be enough, because he found no fault in it. And there has been no fault found in Jesus by the world, because there was no fault in him. <clears throat> and there then came Jesus forth, wearing a purple robe and the crown of thorns on his head, and Pilate said, Behold the man. He took him in there, and they beat him, and then they, they put on a purple robe of mockery upon him, and, and the soldiers uh, platted a crown of thorns and put on his head and said, You're a king, we'll give you a crown. And then they smote him in the face with their hands. Oh, what humiliation and suffering. And then they brought him out, and they stood before Pil the people, and Pilate said, Behold the man. Behold the man, what I've done to him. Isn't that enough? But it wasn't enough for the people wanted to, to crucify him because he said he was the Son of God. And he was the Son of God. And we see this. Behold the man and behold his sufferings. Behold how much he suffered for you and how much he suffered for me. How much he suffered for those who believe in him and trust him as their Lord and Savior. He suffered for a purpose. That purpose was that somebody has to pay for your sins and my sins, or we'll never get to heaven. And therefore he suffered so that we could be redeemed and forgiven because God the Father now <clears throat> looks upon you and he sees you believing in Jesus and that means that all your sins were paid for because he paid for them. He paid for them before Pilate and before the crowd when they crucified him. And so it's important that we see that. The Bible says in Isaiah, in the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, that he was wounded for our transgressions and was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our sins and iniquities, not his own. Chastisement of our peace was upon him. God put upon him our sins, and he was smitten for our sins. And so we see how he suffered, how he suffered on that cross, how he was suffering. Behold, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief, and we esteemed him not, but he was smitten of God and afflicted. Oh, smitten of God. God the Father smote him. Why? He was His only begotten Son and that was ever with Him, always with Him. From the beginning of all time He was with Him. And He became out of the Godhead, He became a man to redeem us. And when He went before Pilate and the cross, the Lord God of glory looked upon Him and put our sins upon Him who believe in Him. Our sins of those who believe in Him were put on Christ and He was smitten of God and afflicted. Oh, we see then the suffering of Christ. Look at His suffering and His humiliation. He was forsaken of God. He was forsaken of God. Over in the book of Mark, the 15th chapter, in the ninth hour, and that was about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. He'd been hanging there since 10 o'clock that morning. And Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is being interpreted, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus Christ in his human flesh for 
you and me, cried out because God had forsaken him. God turned his back upon him because he became sin. He became sin for us. Over in the Bible of, uh, of uh, 2 Corinthians, it said, God has made him to be sin for us. Him who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. In Him. So we see the, the power of God's grace. God's mighty grace is a wonderful thing. Over in the book of uh, uh, Ephesians, uh, the uh, uh, second chapter of Ephesians says, God who is rich in mercy for His great love, wherewith He loved us. I want you to behold a man. Behold his suffering. And then behold the love of God. Behold the love of God. How much he loved you, sinner. How much he loved me as a sinner. And he looked upon his only begotten son. And he banished him. And forsook him. And he, oh, he punished him for your sins and my sins. See, sin had to be punished. And Jesus took that punishment for you and me. Because He loved you. He became sin for us. And you did this because of God's love. But God, who is rich in mercy, in His love, wherewith He has loved us, even we were, when we were dead in sins, He has given us life together with Christ. By grace, you are saved. And so behold the love of God when you behold the man. Behold the man, Paul said. Behold the man. Behold the love of God. Behold also the terror and viciousness and evil of sin. Look what sin culminated in. Look what sin did to our Savior. He who fed the multitude. He who brought good out of bad. He who dried tears and lifted the fallen. He gave food to the hungry. He gave salvation to the lost. He only did good, great good, always doing good. Look what sin did to him when he became sin for you and me when our sins was put upon him. See the ugliness, ugliness, the viciousness, oh, the terror and the evil of sin when he went to that cross and died upon that tree. We see the evil, the evil, the evil of sin. Oh, my dear friends, if we could only see what God has told us and shown us in His Word. We see over the book of First thir uh, Peter, the third, uh, third chapter of First Peter, Christ has suffered for our sins, the just for the unjust, that He might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, quickened by the Spirit. He suffered the just for the unjust, for you and for me. He became sin for us. See how they mocked Him and bruised Him. Your sins, your sins, which you think is little, and your sins did that to Christ. Oh, He paid for them. See the evil of sin. And behold the man. And behold the outcome. Behold the outcome. Here's the outcome. And when the Bible of Philippians, it said, Jesus, who was took upon Himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men, and He being found in likeness as a man, but humbled himself and became obedient even to death, the death of the cross. Wherefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So we see the outcome. The outcome is victory for the Lord and victory for you when you believe in Him and trust Him as your Lord because Jesus now is exalted and the day will come when every knee will bow before Him and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Believe and be saved forever. Believe in Him now. Say, Dear God, please forgive me. I believe that you died for me, that you rose again. And I want you to come in my heart and help me live for you as the Lord of my life. God bless you, my dear friend. Behold the man and live for God. In Jesus' name, amen.